Hello and welcome. Welcome to the first of my video tutorials on AEM Designer. We're just the first for today. We're just going to be looking over the basic layout and uh, where of the program, just finding out where everything is. So, AEM Designer. If you're completely new to AEM Designer, it's a lot more structured than Adobe Acrobat. Um, it is a program that is completely designed from the ground up for making advanced, adaptable, dynamic forms, and as such, there's a lot more panes, panels, palettes, a lot of those things to make it more conducive to making a detailed form. That being said, currently we don't have any documents open. When we do open up our PDF form, it would appear in this gray area in the middle. Uh, on the left hand side, actually let's open up a document right now. So this is just a pretty basic form that I've opened up right here. Uh, and let's let's take a look at all the panes one by one. So on the left hand side, we have our hierarchy. Now, actually, before I go any further, I should note that all of these objects are customizable in their location. This is just merely my personal preference. So I have the hierarchy set up on the left-hand side. I have the, my objects on the right-hand side and my object details and layout and accessibility tabs on the right and the JavaScript window on up top. Now, what is your hierarchy? Your hierarchy is essentially, if you're familiar, if you're pretty familiar with Acrobat, it's essentially your content pane. It's, this lists out um, everything that is in your document. And if you're organized, it'll everything will be in a particular order. So you'll have your master pages, your and then your regular page content, as well as subforms, etc. And we'll go in more in detail with all this content later down the line. But yeah, so left-hand side, the most important aspect is the hierarchy because this is where you will store all of your objects in a structure that you can see easily. Additionally, on the left-hand side, this is also where you access your tab order, which is important for accessibility purposes. You can keyboard through the entire document like this to view the entire tab order. So on the right-hand side, we have our object library. So this is where we add our content to the document. And so we start off with some standard libraries as well. You can also create custom lib objects as well. And to add them to the document, you would just click and drag. Where'd it go? And you would add it right into the document. Anyway, so you would add it to the document like that from the object library. You could also similarly uh, save objects to the right-hand side. You can, here is your fragment library where you can create form fragments. We'll be going over those at a later date. Uh, over here, we have our description of our object field. Right now, we currently have that button selected. Um, we have some various options we can do with that. As far as the layout, we can customize the size of the, uh, of the button. Uh, any accessibility options, we can add a tooltip, add uh, alt text. And then and then up top. So up here is the JavaScript coding window up here. So this is where, for various objects, we can add in scripts to make our form more dynamic and more usable. So right now I have a table selected, which is pretty much this entire this entire first page. So everything that we can see highlighted with this dark bluish gray color. So that's our table and associated with this table are various scripts. Now, right now I have up here, show events with scripts. So all all of the children of this table. So uh, so table one, row two, effective materials, et cetera, et cetera. So basically the first row of a table within our table, it has, it has a button and it has a click event associated with that button. So basically this, long line over here. This represents this plus sign button. So this add button is nested underneath the form, underneath the first page, underneath the first page of subform, etc. And associated with that button is this command. I'm not going to get into JavaScripting today, but basically you can even from the first table in this, even if you have the table one selected from this view, you can view all of the associated objects, associated code all the objects under that table that have JavaScript associated with it from one main area. And additionally, you can limit it by what kind of event you're going to be using or going to be looking for. So you can look for all events that, or all enter events, all click events, all mouse enter events, etc. And we'll get into this all in more detail at a later date. Um, 
Additionally, from the design, you have the design view. You can also go into the master pages. So the master pages is where you would see content across multiple pages. In this particular document, we don't have anything in there. Uh, mo lastly, we have the preview PDF pane or the preview PDF tab. And here we'd be able to fill in our form exactly as our end user would be able to fill it in. So all of our text fields are already made. And of course, one of the most popular features of AEM Designer is the fact that you can have expandable text fields and you can dynamically add and remove rows from tables. I find those to be very useful features and we'll be going over those in more detail at a later date. But those functionalities are present in the preview PDF pane. Now note this, you cannot actually save data in this view. This is just for testing and visual debugging purposes. But yeah, that's a pretty basic intro of the layout of AM Designer. Thanks so much for watching. Next time we'll be looking at master pages. Until then, take care.